Welcome back to Tata Steel. And as the remaining two games are nearing their conclusion, uh, we would like to present to you your rapid recap of today and Fiona. There was really no question what game uh, we want to choose. It is the battle of the two leaders, world champion Magnus Carlsen with the white pieces against Shakriar Mamid Yarov. It was a short game, but it was a really sweet game. Indeed, the two have lots of history. We were wondering, when is this game going to explode into life? From the opening, later on, Magnus opened with 1d4, and soon he uh, got into his newly beloved Catalan. Indeed, there was a big decision to be made here, knight c3, but no, Magnus going for the Catalan, and Chakrar choosing a line that's not the most popular, but is still quite reputable. He grabs the pawn, then he delivers a check on b4 and supports the bishop with a5. Uh, you know, over a thousand games in this position. And essentially, white goes for long-term compensation. Oftentimes, white doesn't rush to win this pawn back. And Magnus going with a rare line, e3. This is e3. what Magnus loves to do. Mm -hmm. And here, Shahya sprung maybe the first slight surprise, or to our eyes, surprising move, <laughs> uh, rook to a6. And you might wonder, what is that rook doing? But in fact, if we look at the powerful Catalan bishop on g2, that rook is getting out of the diagonal. And on, on the very next move, it becomes clear after queen c2, now black is able to play b5 uh, without the rook being on a8. Exactly. And the secondary point is that Black can play c6 in this case and hold everything together. So Magnus refraining from knight e5, instead going for queen c2, b5, a4. And instead of attacking the c6 pawn, he decides to attack the b5 pawn, knight c3. In this position, Chakra had a very interesting chance uh, to sacrifice that pawn for, uh, for a long-term initiative, bishop b7. Maybe that was uh, a better move than what he played, but he decides to cling to the pawn, and Fiona, this is really the turning point. Magnus embarks on an incredibly powerful plan in this position. Yeah, so Magnus, he starts with the move you were expecting, playing in the center, grabbing some space uh, with e4, and after the black bishop dropped back to e7, he takes even more space, uh, advancing to e5. Indeed, and... Black can't really drop back to d7. That's kind of unthinkable due to knight e4 with all sorts of threats. Uh, so Shakriar plays knight d5, but this also happens to be an exchange sacrifice. Shakriar didn't blunder e5. This was a conscious sacrifice. The point Indeed. is that if Magnus grab, mm -hmm. go ahead. No, I was going to say, yeah, Magnus could have grabbed the, the exchange here if he wanted by capturing the knight uh, on d5. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see that in the end, the pawn on a5 is hanging and uh, screwing the rook and the queen. Exactly. But Magnus deciding to make a very important improvement over this position. He first takes on b5, only then does he do this thing. And the point is that the pawn on d5, Fiona, becomes a very serious weakness. And this essentially cost Mamadiara very dearly uh, soon afterward. Yeah, for now, it looked like uh, the exchange sacrifice might be promising with some uh, long-term compensation, some active play. But let's see, after knight c6, Magnus, of course, takes the rook on uh, b6. And here, maybe after rook a8 is the, the moment that Shahriar uh, went wrong. Yeah, so first of all, taking on d4 is not good because Magnus recaptures and then plays rook d1 and, and he wins the pawn on d5 and black's position collapses. Mami Darb didn't do that. We thought that he perhaps should have developed on e6 immediately. It's possible that what discouraged him was the fact that after bishop takes f8, Magnus has the nasty move knight g5. Still, it looks like black is doing okay after g6, probably worse, but okay. But Chakriar plays h6, and that just turns out to be too slow. It lets Magnus coordinate his pieces with devastating effect. Yeah, Magnus found a very crafty plan here. He started by bringing his rook from f1 to a1. And from here on out, I mean, Magnus just played with absolute uh, beautiful precision. Bishop e6, the move we were expecting a move ago. Suddenly, uh, Dania, the situation has changed. Yeah, and this is the whole point. The, the move h6 allows white to bring the rook from f1 to a1 so that when Magnus plays queen d1 to defend a pawn, uh, the rook would have been on f1. It would have been locked out of the game. But as it stands, both rooks are now coordinated. Both of them are in it. And the real critical moment came after b4. 
Shakurar wants to play b3, lock White's pawn on b2, and perhaps even get the knight through b4 to d3, but now a brilliant move by Magnus. This basically wins the game. b3, a beautiful move. Some of us might be afraid to allow the black pawn to come to c3. It is now a protected pass pawn, but Magnus understood this pawn is going nowhere in. And uh, now attacking the queen and, uh, yeah, just Magnus judging from a distance, this pawn on c3 is not a problem. And the knight to e1, very soon, Dania, that was going to play a decisive role in the game. Indeed, and the idea, of course, is to block Gave the pawn on c2 and later swing over to e3, the weakness of the d5 pawn uh, and white's dominance over the a file contributes to the, to the decisive advantage. Out of desperation, Chakra, he tries to open up the center with f6. And now Magnus, at stopping on a dime and switching ideas, that's what makes him so incredible. Not knight c2, but knight d3. The knight redirects in order to protect the e5 pawn, and it also threatens to go to f4. Chakra takes on e5, but Fiona here the positional play turns seamlessly into tactics. There are just too many undefended pieces in the black camp. After knight takes e5, uh, there was basically nothing Shach could do. He tried to take uh, on e5, but now we see the bishop on e6 is unprotected. That drop, and there was really no, uh, there were really no other tries in this position. There weren't. After rook takes e6, everything collapses. d5, e5, you mentioned it. Too many undefended pieces. One more try uh, by Shakriar c2, but Magnus responds with a cold-blooded queen e1. And in this position, Shakriar resigned. Uh, if he goes knight e3, Magnus captures the bishop, simultaneously attacking black's queen. There is nothing else to try. If you move the knight away, bishop takes d5, uh, and white vacuums up all of black's pieces. A, an amazing win, 27 moves. This is vintage Magnus Fiona. I mean, it seemed like Shakriar, he played an inspired game, but he really was never in it. Indeed, Magnus Carlsen, what a game by the world champion. He is now the sole leader. He was very happy in the interview afterwards, and he has every reason to be. This was your rapid recap of the day. So many fighting players uh, in this tournament, all of them incredibly fighting for decisive results. Of course, the main one, of the day is at the bottom, Magnus Carlsen winning his game against Achiar, the one we just saw, and Karyakin against Prague. We talked about uh, Nils Grandelius' loss uh, against Fabiano Caruana plenty. Anish Giri, he was the first to win his game today. He's won four in a row. Uh, and if we look at the standings, he is now just half a point behind so leader a certain Magnus Carlsen with Shahya Mamediarov and uh, Vidit Gujarati still looming on five and a half. But also Fabio, uh, Fab why do I keep calling him Fabio? Fabio. <laughs> <laughs> Fabiano yeah. making his way back up the rankings. Big win today against Niels. And uh, as we take a look at the pairings for tomorrow, a couple of huge games. Of course, Magnus Black against Sergei, I know who Vidit. Uh, is rooting for. Vidit himself is white against Prague, another brutal game for Prague, and a, a game that Vidit really has to win uh, if he wants to contend for first place. Fabi is going to try to keep his positive streak going against uh, Richard Report, Dubov Grindelius, Esipenko Van Forest, and Anish Giri also with a very important game, white against an off-form Duda. We will see how that game goes as well. Fiona. For sure. And finally, before we leave you, um, let's quickly have a look at the tournament schedule. So we'll be back tomorrow, same place, same time, round 10. We'll start at 2 p.m. Uh, local time, that's Central European, 5 a.m. Pacific. And after that, uh, on Thursday, we'll have another rest day. And the players, I'm sure, will make the most of it before the final weekend coming up. We'll be here Friday, Saturday, Sunday, for the conclusion of this Tata Steel Chess Tournament. For now, Dania, it's been another tremendously exciting day. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching us, and I'll leave you the, the closing words. Fiona, this has been great, always a pleasure. Really, from the first moves, this has been uh, an incredible round. We, we have such diversity of openings. Uh, we have so many interesting game arcs. We have time scrambles, we have positional games, we have really fascinating end games and you can see in every move that these players play the effort they are hungry uh, they're hungry for victories from uh, the lowest rated player to magnus carlson it was an amazing round and we'd like to thank 
everybody for watching. And of course, Bic for yet another, yeah, I begrudgingly have to thank Bic <laughs> for yet another flawless broadcast. So thank you very much. And we will see you tomorrow for the next round. Have oh, and maybe day. just before I forget, uh, I think mm -hmm. stay on this channel because Title Tuesday oh. is ongoing. So I think we're going to go there. So plenty Beautiful. more chess to look forward to tonight. Have a good one. We'll see you tomorrow.